next speaker uh, will be present only virtually. We will have a recorded, recorded talk by Professor Lukas Tursky. Good morning. I would like to apologize that uh, I am not physically present at this Jubilee conference for Professor Ivan Bialinski Pirula. But unfortunately, this is due to some medical restrictions which are Hearing my daily activities uh, nowadays. Uh, let me uh, share the screen now to show you a few slides. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, 62 Years. A few snapshots from the history and the present times. And as you see, this, this, this slide contains a cartoon of Professor Ivo Białyński Birula, which I received recently courtesy of Karol Van, a former PhD student of Professor Białyński and now Professor at Girona Gura and also a prominent physicist in Vietnam. I shall come back to that point slightly later, later on. Uh, I joined the physics community uh, in 1960, becoming a student of the physics department of University of Warsaw, located then at now abandoned Hubble of the Warsaw Physics on Hoxha 69. And also, almost at the beginning of um, the education, I learned about Professor Ivan Białyński Birula for the first course we had to listen was a course in mathematics in algebra, of, on algebra taught by uh, Professor Andrzej Szczepan Białyński Birula and uh, Almost at the beginning, he told us that the scope of the lectures is uh, prepared um, based on a lengthy discussion he had with his physics, physicist brother, uh, Professor Ivo Białyński Birur. Uh, the physically, I start attending lectures of Professor Ivo Białyński Birula two years later in 1963. Uh, and that was a course on a theoretical mechanics. And uh, uh, I looked up through my papers a few days ago and found that he, he was lecturing, that I re recall very well, and that's what's written in my index, but the exam from us were accepted by his colleague, Professor Wojciech Pulci. Next year, we attend, we all, Professor Jerzy Kioski, for example, we attended a seminar on theoretical physics, and our supervisors on that seminar were Ivo Białyński Birula and Professor Andrzej Trautmann. That was a remarkable seminar, for it allowed us to see, as students, that there are essentially different roads leading to the same direction, to the top of the building which we called theoretical physics. 
I finished the university uh, writing a master thesis under the guidance of another colleague of Professor Bialyski, Richard Bayeski, who was a plasma physicist at the Nuclear Physics Institute. And um, that was a paper where I had to learn a lot of the continuous media mechanics, and that had a tremendous influence on my further life. And the paper was on the surface waves in, um, in the properly constructed plasma column. Uh, Richard Gajewski uh, had a custom of not hiring his master thesis students. Go on the market and I will write your opinion. That was his statement. So I found a job at the Institute of Fundamental Technology Research, IPPT, and uh, working with a group of Professor Hendrik Zorski that was continuous media mechanics group. Hendrik Zorski was an engineer by training, but he was a physicist by heart. And he essentially ordered to continue going to the physics department, uh, attending seminars there and lectures, and also, in some sense, telling him what is interesting going on in physics. What did I learn? Almost weekly, we sit uh, over the coffee and sandwiches in the famous little bar in the IPPT, uh, and uh, it was my obligation to tell Hendrik and uh, some uh, other people who were there interested what, whether there was something interesting in physics happening during that week I learned. Uh, uh, my PhD thesis were about uh, hydrodynamics uh, of a superfluid helium-4. That was a very hot issue at the time, although in cold temperatures physics. And uh, that was much before the superfluidity of helium-3 was discovered. And also uh, that was um, surely much earlier than the cold atom physics becomes so fashionable. Uh, and uh, the other subject I was interested in was a theory of turbulence. A turbulence is a part of natural sciences where physics failed completely. Uh, uh, it's remarkable that Still holding is a phenomenological description of a turbulence which we owe to the mathematicians for longer. Um, but anyway, I gave at that time a Feynman diagrams were there, and there were people trying to formulate a perturbation theory like for turbulence which failed. But uh, using the Feynman diagrams and all this technique, which was at that time very much mm, uh, very popular in, in, in theoretical physics. So there, I remember, I don't, know, I don't recall what was in it, but I remember that there was even a paper on the Veneziano method in, for the tour of turbulence. And, uh, so I gave a talk on this Feynman diagrams in turbulence at plasma physics seminar at Hoja, and Richard Gajewski suggested to, to and I believe also Yubianski listened to this talk, that uh, I gave to Professor Infeld that perhaps that is interesting for the Thursday seminar, and I was thrown into this the afternoon Thursday seminar, barely able to talk decent English, uh, that doesn't imply that I talk decent English nowadays. And um, 
uh, I uh, gave the talk, I survived, and as a result, Professor Infant uh, suggested to me that I finish the PhD and come back to Hoxha and join his institute. But that was 67. In 68, in early in 68, Professor Infant passed away. Then the March 68 happened, Richard Gajewski was kicked out from the Nuclear Physics Institute and also had been essentially forced to emigrate from Poland. Uh, Henrik Zorski was having an enormous amount of problems. Uh, and um, so only in the fall of 69, I uh, joined the physics department and uh, I returned to Hoxha, and I had to join some research group there, and the group to which I fit was Professor Ivo Gaulinski Pirula group, which also was doing a statistical physics. Professor Jaroslav Piasecki was there. They both done beautiful work on the, on the easing model at the time. And um, and that as soon as I learned, as as soon as I joined the the professor group, I learned that there is this technique used by the quantum optics people at the time uh, called the coherent states application. And um, I wrote a paper in which I use the coherent states to reformulate and reconstruct or actually formulate. Uh, Landau hydrodynamics of superfluid helium-4 by means of a coherent state. And that was a paper which allowed Professor Ivo Białynski Birula to suggest to Jim Langer at Carnegie Mellon University that I that he hired me as a postdoc. And I went to Pittsburgh and uh, I started working on the first order phase transformation. That was a time where everybody was working on the phase transformation. Ken Wilson had wrote this seminal papers on the use of the normalization group technique for um, uh, phase order transformation. But Jim Langer was working on the first order phase transformation. And that's a different piece. That's a finite scale perturbation. And we wrote a paper together, which was intended to be a chemical physics paper, actually, there were a few papers. And it, uh, it, uh, it turned out that uh, it's mostly used still for a nuclear physics, heavy ion collision. And um, um, when I was in Pittsburgh, uh, Gawinski's family arrived there as well, and that was when we started to knew each other more personally. Uh, that was also an interesting period day on, during our stay in Pittsburgh, for before uh, we were bought in the United States, uh, Krzysztof Zanussi, uh, 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 my high school colleague, have made a film uh, called Illumination, in which Professor Kiawinski was starring a, a, a prominent role. And uh, Bogdan Yeni, Wodek Zawadzki, my older brother, Władysław, and I, we, we, we play minor roles there, but sufficient to end up on the poster of the, of the movie with which was we the heroine of the movie, Mrs. Pritula. And, um, and uh, uh, we invited uh, Krzysztof to Pittsburgh. The movie Illumination was shown in this remarkable building there called Cathedral of Learning. And that allowed us the status of celebrities. Well, at least for this evening when the movie was shown there. Uh, I returned it. We returned it to Port de Warsaw, and um, and uh, and the life was going on. And uh, eventually, in um, uh, uh, 
11 years later, uh, Professor Gawinski suggested me to join him in this new endeavor, uh, setting up a theoretical physics group at Służewiec, in the, in the, on the premises of the Institute of Physics. Uh, so I joined him there and uh, continued to work on many different topics, but um, uh, we, uh, we wrote with the special Kivinsky a short paper on the relativistic statistical physics. That was a topic at the time which was very important, and I had a graduate student, Piotr Bernstein, whose thesis was on the uh, description of a so-called bright Darwin plasma. It's the hot plasma, but not sufficiently hot. Uh, and that allowed to eliminate electromagnetic degrees of freedom of that system on the expense of using a Hamilton description, but with the velocity dependent and multi-particle interaction. And the technique we use was so called Klimundovich distribution function. That is a kind of a second quantization of a classical many-body theory. And, uh, uh, and uh, we published that paper in the not very popular journal. And uh, a few years later, Professor Bialnitsky returned from the United States. And he told me that uh, we, we were then continuously talking physics at the, at the shop. I mean, that was a small group, so we, we can talk with each other. Everybody knew what was the other person doing. And um, we, he told me that he did some work on relativistic plasma physics using a Klimontovich formulation. And I said, gee, that's similar. So we sit down together and we wrote the paper, Gage Independent Canonical Formulation of Relativistic Plasma Theory, which became a kind of classic in that field. And, um, and, um, and uh, at the same time, a technique to which uh, people were using in the first of the phase transformation theory, particularly we use it with Jim Langer, uh, which was a description of the dissipative processes in uh, many body physics, where the, the technique is, to, it, there is an attempt to use a technique from non-dissipative dynamics with the properly retailed Poisson brackets. The Poisson brackets are replaced by the brackets which are neither symplectic nor symmetric. And um, uh, this was called canonical dissipative description. And almost at the same time, the symplectic uh, formulation of plasma physics become a fundamental mathematical and numerical tool uh, for people doing plasma machines. Plasma focus was at the time popular, and also the various versions of the tokamaks. And the uh, uh, creator of this field of symplectic, or dynamics and symplectic algorithms for plasma physics Alan Kaufman at Berkeley was at Berkeley, and I was at Berkeley for a while. And um, we uh, worked together with Alan Kaufman on the generalization of the, uh, of the what we previously did with Ivo Bialinski Birula, and we wrote the paper on a canonical dissipative formulation of a relativistic plasma kinetic theory. And um, and um, the word canonical dissipative then quickly disappeared. This technique is now called retroplectic. And uh, uh, we did a lot of work on that in, here in Warsaw, particularly with my Vietnamese student, Sonnet Nguyen. And um, 
we did also a lot of that uh, in the uh, uh, in the more directed area of uh, uh, dissipative magnetic models that was done with uh, unfortunately late uh, Marek Cheplak and with my other postdoc uh, Janusz Hoes who is a professor at the University of the Polytechnics in Warsaw and um, we uh, we um, uh, and that allows me to go back to the cartoon at the beginning of my lecture. Uh, as I said, I received it from Kaul and Ban, and Kaul um, uh, told me also how many theoretical physicists in Vietnam consider themselves to be uh, scientific grandchildren of Professor Gelnitsky Mirula and Kao. And if you add to them as students of Sonnet, uh, that looks like Professor Gelnitsky has, without much of the effort there, built up a spin-off of a theoretical physics institute in uh, uh, that area. As you know, I am now privileged to share the office with Professor Bialinski since many years, and we did allow us, uh, I mean, before the COVID struck, uh, a daily chance on physics, on many things, and um, also on something which become a part of my profession, uh, spreading science to the general society. That is, of course, uh, almost illegal activity, considering official way of what science is supposed to do in, in many countries. Uh, uh, but we talk a lot about with Professor Bianiski, and here is an example of what comes out of this discussion. Uh, a student of uh, uh, Professor Bialinski had, uh, uh, had shown him uh, 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 paper, uh, a book actually, written by a certain psychology professor at the uh, University of Warsaw. And um, that book was entitled Resocializatia Psychologica Sacralum Contextu Psychologica. That's a complete nonsense. And we wrote a review of it uh, in the of the crack of journal. And as you see, it even has an equation. I think this is an equation copy from, from the paper. And there's another example. Back uh, in 2016, on an important event at the Presidential Palace in Warsaw, Professor Gelinski took a stand on the status of Polish science. And that attracted a lot of attention. And a journalist from the Czech Gazeta Prawda Mira Sikodolska, uh, she asked for the interview, and Professor Bielinski asked me to join that interview. And that's the publication of that interview in the January of 2007. And I believe that with this shuttle of uh, the recollection, oh, I should also mention perhaps that uh, there is a kind of a problem which is f continuously in Poland, that is the computerization. And uh, uh, Professor Białynicki was 
one of the first individuals who brought the person computer to Poland. That was a beauty, a Hewlett Packard machine. And uh, then in the Center for Theoretical Physics, other computers show up. Uh, Professor Kioski sponsored uh, Apple II computer. Mm, I had my own little uh, laptop, I should say. Uh, Epson HX20 and uh, the Kazik uh, Zhuzelski and the Commodore 64, not mentioning a number of uh, uh, computers. The Schulet Packard calculators, which were programmable. Then Sharp, I also had the basic programmable calculator, Sharp. And um, some of those computers I donated to the, which I had, I donated to the computer museum in Krakow. And, um, and uh, this, the, it was a center for theoretical physics in which in the summer, on the summer in the 80s, I, uh, together with my colleague, with the help of students from mathematics, the Institute of Mathematics, who were doing a summer job. We run uh, summer schools for uh, teachers. The first school for, for teachers, high school teachers, how to use computers in school, they were held at the, at the Center for Theoretical Physics, and the professor was instrumental in convincing me to to, to to operate this group. So, uh, with this, I would like to end up this uh, recollection with this uh, typical old Latin words, ad multos annos dear boss. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. And again, I apologize for not being able to be with you today and this evening. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Although we cannot ask questions, we still can have comments from the audience about what has been said. Mm -hmm. uh, is anyone up to add something to the story? Yes, please. But what was it? maybe Ivo can't say this, but what was the controversy? In the, what was the controversy about in the newspaper? What was the article about in the newspaper? What caused all of this? Huh. Say it again. So my question was, what caused the discussion in the newspaper? Well, uh, that was a long-going discussion between our group and physics in general and various people on the outside who have not understood physics but they were trying to gain advantage by using the physical terms to their, for their purpose and I was probably one of the persons who was fighting such people, and we had many publications in ordinary journals, not in physics journals, where we tried to convince the general public that these people are really acting against science and they should be eliminated from public <laughs> discussion. But, of course, physically, but in general. And I was continuing... Not physically, but by the physicists. <laughs> for, for, for many years. My last appearance here, which was probably noticed, was when Professor Troutman and Roger Pedros received a decoration from our president. I was supposed to introduce these
scientist and I injected using the method of injection <laughs> some remarks about the level of scientific discussion mentioning just briefly that one should not use Coca-Cola cans and other devices like that to discuss serious problems like airplane crashes. And our president didn't like that at all. So when I finished, he was living with his entourage and passing me, me he said, I will say it in Polish. Nie oczekiwałem od pana takiej prymitywnej gadki. Well, I don't speak Polish, but I can imagine what it is. Well, I didn't, I didn't expect to nothing to enjoy this comment. This comment. comment. <laughs> so this discussion was going on for many years. There was one person, for example, way back when really uh. my role here was started, who was Professor Kochmański, who claimed that he disproved relativity because he said that there is a distinguished cosmic vector in space which clearly makes relativity invalid. And I was then naive and stupid. Later I had to really correct this somehow because naively I said, thinking that this really is the right attitude, that perhaps authorities should give some money for his experiment to show that there is no cosmic vector. But I didn't realize that the discussion with such people leads nowhere. <laughs> So that was the way it was. And Very good. One remark, because Lukasz Tulski brought me some memories. When the martial law started, we were sitting in this barrack that was then built for us by the local specialist at the Institute of Physics who didn't know much about building but still they could construct something so we were sitting there and Lukasz Turski then was a great pessimist he still is some more pessimistic than I am <laughs> and he said that the end of everything now I know what will happen notice that General Jaruzelski as an advisor, Gurnitsky. And Gurnitsky was a newsman who spent some time in South America giving relations in the press about the situation there. And Lukasz Turski said that I explicitly remember this. Just wait until perhaps tomorrow when all physicists and other people like that will be brought on the big stadium and they will all sh be shot. <coughs> that was how a pessimist can view the situation. That was about various reminiscences of the old days. And Thank you for asking the question. Thank you, you Professor, for these interesting comments. Uh, you probably all appreciate that life as a physicist is interesting not only because of time spent by the blackboard, but because of many other sometimes surprising circumstances when the quality of Gain by being a physicist and especially maybe a theoretical physicist, all of the sudden become very important and may change the, 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 the flow of events. Uh, is, is there any other comment or, or 
remarkable question. Uh, if not, let's uh, thank you everybody. There is a coffee break now. Thank you.